and welcome back to Board and Savior. Uh, we are doing a little unboxing right now of Oathsworn. I got the Oathsworn core pledge. So we are gonna open it up and see what's what. Cause you know, sometimes you do reviews, sometimes you do gameplays, and sometimes you get a game in the mail and then you open it. And that's what I'm doing right now. So let's open it. Um, as you may or may not know, Oathsworn is a game with, uh, with some spoilers, with some potential spoilers. You also see this, uh, this yellow kind of box uh, of, of, uh, of tape around the table. That's where the top-down camera can see stuff. It can see stuff in the top-down box. Wow, would you look at that? We, we're, we're a little bit more professional with the top-down camera this time than we were last time. I don't know if you remember. I don't know if you were here for the Kemet what for the Yucatan uh, unboxing, but it looked worse. Oathsworn Into the Deep Wood uh, is a game that has some spoilers. This is a, a campaign style game. You uh, and either just yourself or you and a group of friends can play through all sorts of different kind of uh, chapters in the game. Um, and the game is sort of half story, half uh, uh, combat. And all of those combat encounters and the story stuff as well, um, it's all a mystery uh, to, to me it is. Like aside from what you see on the front of the box, this, uh, this big rat gentleman, I think it's a lady actually, this big rat lady. Uh, that's the only miniature monster that I know, except I think there's like spoilers. Uh, if you don't wanna know, skip ahead, spoilers. There's like a kind of worm guy as well. But that's all that I, that's truly all that I know uh, of the, of the, the baddie minis in this game. And if you want an unboxing that unboxes all of those uh, mystery miniatures, you're, you're in the wrong place. So, you know, click away. Uh, because I'm not, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I will not be opening the all the mystery boxes. I'm just opening kind of the base game. I'll check out the the rat uh, miniature because I know about that one, um, and then we'll be on our way. And uh, yeah, this is you know it's a Kickstarter game. But this is the this is kind of the second printing with a few little changes. Um, so you know. I'm not expecting this video to do uh, a ton of numbers. I feel like there's a lot of unboxing videos that already exist for this game. Come on, get off of there. There we go. And we've already lost something. That's great. Okay, so we got the thing. Uh, there's a there's a first time setup uh, and and warning sheet. Uh, it says warning: the deepwood holds many mysteries, and so does this box. You do not open any boxes, envelopes, or books, nor look at the faces of any cards or boards until told to. Components you may look at immediately are both rule books, punch boards, miniatures in trays, player aids, ability cards, archetype cards, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Wow. Intense. Very intense stuff here. So we've got some little foams for the protections. We have, uh, wow, this is, there's so many mysteries in here. We have uh, mystery envelope either 2 or 11. This is either Roman numeral 2 or regular number 11, unclear, but uh, very fun. Um, I can also, yeah, that's that's where we kind of want to be with this thing. So we have mystery envelopes A, B, uh, A, B, do, where do we go? C, D, E, F, G, H, okay. So A through H of mystery envelopes, as well as mystery envelope 11 slash Roman numeral two. Okay, now we've got some minis going on. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick this box like over here. And then I'm gonna take stuff out of the box because this is an unboxing. So things need to be unboxed. Okay, so here we have some minis uh, with, with Push fit design. Push fit design tells us uh, these are multi part push fit minis. If a part becomes loose, simply push the piece back into place and squeeze the front and back of the miniature tightly. We'll see how that design works. Um, I did not get the 
the two extras, uh, the terrain box or the armory box, those things felt um, like overkill. And I know that uh, just from what I saw, a few people um, had gotten the uh, the armory and terrain boxes and were like, they're kind of superfluous. You don't really, you don't really need them. Uh, so I, I didn't get them. I did not get them. So let's take a look at some minis here. We've got this guy. We'll call him Donnie. He's like, he's got like kind of roots growing off of him. He's like a scary guy. Yeah. Uh, we've got a knight. Seemingly, let's see if the, is this a push fit design guy? No, I think this is just a regular fellow. Are these like maybe like city guards kind of thing? You've got this uh, this knight here. Where can you like focus on stuff? I don't even know. Well, we've got a knight. We've got this guy. <laughs> this, this is, are you interested in this? Um, yeah, we've got some uh, a monster there. We've got a bunch of different knights. Looks like there are two. Um, avian fellas, like eagles or, or hawks or something, uh, on little flight stands. It's pretty cool. Um, these are all, I mean, it feels like you almost don't need to say it these days uh, about quality miniatures because it's just sort of expected in a lot of board games. But, you know, these are these are high quality miniatures, very detailed, lots of lots of very little details included in all these things. I do uh, like to paint, so these details make that painting easier. I don't know if I'll end up painting all of these fellas because they're there are quite a few. But if I do, there's a lot of detail to uh, to paint and a lot of a lot of good stuff to work with there. So I don't think I don't think I noticed any of these had the that like push fit design. Um, so there's there's that to note. Uh, I think these are the playable characters, um, and these I think would have that push fit design. Uh, yes, okay, they do. So yeah, so a lot of the the or all the playable characters. Um, the armory box comes with a bunch of like alternate sculpt weapons that you could potentially unlock uh, or, or find through the course of the game. So like this guy who has two axes, maybe you find a sword for him and he's got an axe and a sword or maybe a shield and a sword. And so there's like a bunch of different arms that you could switch out and, uh, and stick on. But um, while that is a really cool idea, as you can see, behind me. I've got a lot of stuff already. I have a lot of space already taken up. Uh, so the the less space we can take up, the better. I did I did genuinely consider for Oathsworn getting um, the standees and not the gigantic boxes of enemy miniatures. But also I do like to paint and these are good quality miniatures. And I don't know if I'm going to paint like everything, like the little you know, city guards and birds and things, but the big monsters and the player characters, like these are, these are big, uh, miniatures and like surprising texture. The, the other ones, the first box that I, uh, opened up was, you know, kind of what you come to expect in like board game miniatures. Um, like they're a little bit of a, of a softer plastic. Um, like they feel like if you kind of bend, uh, you know, like the bird's wing, it will just kind of deform and then slowly sort of come back pretty much where it was left. These um, player minis are like hard plastic, but not even like, you know, like a, a Marvel Crisis Protocol hard plastic or like a Warhammer hard plastic. These are like almost like toy plastic, uh, which is not something that I'm used to seeing. Like you can hear... Like that's not the usual uh, plastic miniature sound when you kind of move it around. These are very much like action figure kind of plastic. Um, it definitely, it has like a, a, a brittle feeling to me. Um, like I, I would snap this sword if I, if I bent it. Um, so don't do that, you know, I guess. 
Um, they also come off the bases. I think that's meant to make painting more easy, which uh, I do appreciate. That's a that's a very, again, a very unusual thing to see in these board games. I'm trying to think. I can't think of any other board game board games, uh, like not miniatures games that have that kind of design. Um, that's really interesting. That's really unique. And they all, yeah, they all pop off of their respective bases. Okay, enough about the plastic, um, but maybe not. Maybe that's why you're here. Maybe you love it when I talk about plastic. Let's talk about all these different individual characters. Um, so I don't know who any of these people are, but uh, we have I would say like a kind of like a barbarian looking guy, uh, uh, dual wielding these axes. He's yelling. Uh, his face sculpt looks really good. Um, he seems to have kind of a, a an animal skull and pelt um, on his back. Um, seems like kind of traditional, you know, D and D barbarian style. This guy looks a little bit more like a paladin. Um, you know, he's got he's got his uh, his his big like plate armor he's got a, a big shield he's got his sword um this guy looks like a, the type of character that would seem boring to me if i were to read the description like he's probably like fights for honor or whatever like a loser uh this very looks very much like a ranger got the uh the the bow and arrows uh got that kind of hood um she uh, again, like all the face sculpts are like nicely detailed, not like crazy detailed, just like solid, nice detail. Um, she's got sort of like a scale uh, uh, armor underneath her kind of long coat. She looks very cool. I am so far of the characters, like the most intrigued to play her. This guy looks like Ronan, the accuser. Um, he's got the like big old hammer, um, maybe even with like a, uh, an encrusted, maybe not an encrusted gem, but sort of that similar thing. He looks just like Ronan, the accuser. Um, he's got the hood. He's got almost like a, a satchel on his chest, like a laptop bag, it looks like. I wonder if this guy has like a, a Lenovo Thinkbook or something. That, that'd be pretty cool. Then we have, of course, the Ursus War Bear, uh, a gigantic bear, a polar bear with a huge great axe, which it's hard not to want to be that guy because it's a bear with a great axe. I mean, I'm only human and he's a bear. <laughs> Then we have this lady, uh, some, some, some sort of caster. She's got uh, like a lantern on a crooked uh, uh, branch staff kind of thing. Definitely looks like this, this would be ripe for some uh, uh, rife. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm so tired. For uh, some like object source lighting, like the lantern is uh, is casting light onto her and she's casting a spell with it. Uh, I typically like to play casters in you know D and D in these kind of games, so that is very interesting to me. This guy looks like uh, a classic rogue. Um, got the uh, got the long cloak uh, going in the hood. He's got the two daggers. Uh, definitely looks like he's he's doing some some sneak attack action. Uh, we have a. Freaking cool. Okay, so like a uh, tree lady. She's got sort of root tendrils growing out of the back of her. She's got uh, crazy, I don't know if it's hair. I don't know if it's just like wooden root stuff. I don't know what they're called in this game. Tree folk or something. I don't know. She's a tree folk. Then we have a potentially avian kind of guy. Uh, maybe that's like a feathery plumage coming off of his head, uh, potentially like a little beak there. He's got a cloak that covers every part of him. Uh, thankfully they do come off the bases so you could get painting in there. Wow, um, just kind of funny. His insides, they're, this, this guy does not have legs. No legs here, just, just empty insides. That's okay, you don't see him when he's on the thing, but less less to paint. That's a good thing. But no legs. If you were if you were wondering if this guy had legs, answer's no. 
Um, okay, we need to we need to utilize the push fit design for this uh, this knight looking fella. So we've got a knight looking fella. He's got like a, a spiked flail and a shield. He's wearing a helmet. So descriptive. You can just look at it too, right? Um, but you know, you're here. You're here to hang out with me, and I I appreciate that. Let's stay hydrated out there. Okay, and we got sort of another knight looking fellow uh, with like a, a lion uh, shoulder pauldron, which is, uh, I, I don't know if, the, if they're trying to say that this is like a design. I think it's got to be like a design. It doesn't look like an actual lion head and they know how to do that kind of thing. He's also got three faces on his leg, like three kind of theater masks almost. Uh, on his leg. Interesting. I wonder what his deal is. And then, last but not least, another push fit design uh, coming in handy here. We've got another archer, um, and she is mid bowstring pull uh, without a bowstring. There's no like a little plastic bowstring, but she's she's clearly mid draw so there's two kind of archery characters um and then uh yeah so i i don't know i would guess like two m ranged with like physical attacks one ranged like caster and then a lot of different melee weapons and i don't know if this uh tree person is also a caster of some kind that is very possible um, and potentially any of these people are like mixed. Uh, they do, you know, casting and melee fighting. I don't, I don't know. But uh, very, just my opinions so far. Uh, this feels like the type of game that I'm gonna want to try a bunch of different characters and see how they feel. But it also feels like the type of game like Gloomhaven where you kind of fall in love with one of the characters and then you just play that one for. Uh, for the campaign and then you just you have so much hope to the about the future about like oh maybe someday i'll play this one but you know when gloomhaven has uh, 120 scenarios or whatever how many times are you really gonna play it that's the question that is the question okay moving right along oh boy we are gonna need a blade boom okay we have our game board uh, which has its its uh, its cardinal directions in all of the corners. Uh, you can see, yeah, you can you can see it. You can't see all of it, but it's fine. It's a uh, it just looks like a really good game board. It's got hex spaces, um, nice quality printing. What's on the back here? Do we have a, an alternate kind of map? We do. We've got uh, so like a forest map, and then more of a. Uh, city map with kind of cobbled streets, cobblestone streets. Oh, ho, ho, ho. All righty. Cool. Yeah. Good. Very good. Then we've got a bunch of punch sheets. We've got uh, this one, and we've got this one with some money, and we've got, oh, I punched one accidentally. And we've got, I think, some kind of terrain pieces. Uh, for maybe like if there's fire spreading, that kind of thing. We've got uh, two like little huts, two cabins, some uh, some stone walls, and uh, some men, uh, 12 of the same man, and then some trees, some tree stumps. Um, very, very cool, very cool indeed. We have two card trays. You ever seen those before? Now you have. We have this thing. Um, okay, so for each of the story portions, uh, there is a kind of time tracker associated. Uh, and this is one of them. These are, these are all of them kind of bundled up together. Uh, and when you hit various kind of time markers uh, on the track, different things will happen or you will um, unlock different things. Or I, I think you actually lose out on certain 
bonuses for the battle. Like if you go into the battle and there are still some uh, bonuses like uncovered, I think you get those in the battle, that kind of thing. Um, so you're encouraged to kind of move through the story and get to the battle quickly, but you don't know the right path. So you're like trying to get to the, so that's all, that's all fun. Um, what do we have here? Oh boy, this is going to be some stuff that I'm not allowed to open, I think. Um, a large uh, packet of things, of books. Okay, so we've got uh, our free company sheet, and we have a few of those. We have like, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 of those. Uh, a little thing for you to mark your uh, your party information, um, and uh, it seems like you can you can kind of add or unlock traits throughout the uh, throughout the story. Field medic, quartermaster, tough as nails, that kind of thing. Um, we've got some little plastic baggies. I don't need any more because I have too many forever. Uh, this is a journal. I'm probably not supposed to open this. Yep, it says right at the start. Don't open this. Here, I'll show you. Look, nope, don't open that. Uh, do not read any pages in this book until told to do so. Do not flick through this book. Boy, that is a real... It's a good thing they said specifically not to flick through because I, j I really want to. Like, I feel myself wanting to do that. Um, we've got this. This is... Uh, you can use this to draw pictures on. So, pretty cool. Uh, this is storybook chapters 12 through 21. So this is storybook chapters 1 through 11. Um, I don't know that I knew that there were that many. I kind of thought there were 12 in the... I, I mean, 21 is better. I'd rather have 21. That's more, you see. Uh, yeah, that's fantastic. That's that's really cool. So, I mean, these are, these are thick books. I'm not going to spoil myself or anything, but I'm just going to see how many pages. There are 169 pages... In, oh, I guess that's the second one. What about the first one? Uh, and the first one, 170. 170, 169 uh, in these two books. You've got over 300 pages of story here. That's like a, a kind of small novel, um, but it's a board game that you play. This is, uh, you, can, you can draw pictures. And then we have some rule books. We have the encounter rule book, we have the encounter book, and we have the story rule book. And this you can actually use to draw pictures. That's a little running gag. Um, I think I, I can't remember what I'm allowed to look at of these. Okay, both rule books you're allowed to look at, but not the encounter book, which, which makes some sense. So encounter book, spoilers, can't do it. Uh, but the story and encounter rule books you can indeed look at. And do these have the same? No, these are, there are different glossaries uh, on the back. Do, why did I think they were different? Because they actually are the same. Um, so, yeah, they're the same. Same things on the back of both. Which is, I'm, that's, I'm glad that, like, <laughs> you don't need two separate ones uh, for the different phases of the game. That is nice. Um, so there is, uh, with this second edition, there came this uh, kind of unique first player marker, I believe. Um, so first player marker, yeah, there you go, look at that, look at that, that's pretty cool, huh? That's pretty cool, wow. First player marker. It's it's got it's not like super heavy, but it's got like a teeny tiny bit of weight to it. I don't know what the material is. It honestly feels like oh, it smells like metal. Um, it feels almost like stone. Um, but it's cool. I feel like that my water bottle has my name on it. I didn't request that. Just so you know, um, that was uh, it. It was it came like that. Um, I know my own name, so. Uh, we've got, I think these are called like Amber, A yeah, Amber. It's like A E M B E R, I think. Um, but you know, board games have all their different energy uh, sources, and they're all a different silly name that doesn't make sense. Amber, Aether. I think yeah, it's Amber. These look really cool. Um, they're definitely just like little plasticky things, but they look nice and shiny in the, in the light, and I like that. Then. Uh, I'm not gonna open these. You can see they are little wooden cubes in the colors of yellow, red, and black. And we've got 
just so many cards. So many cards. Uh, these cards have a black cube on the back. Got it? These cards uh, have... So I, I don't want to say what that is because it's a spoiler. But uh, the backs of them have the number 20 uh, with a blue color. They, these have the number 33. I assume they are numbered. Uh, I don't think they're all 20 and all 33. I think they're I think they're numbered. These say ally and these say common item. Spoilers. They're allies and common items. These also are coming out of uh, this little uh, high quality um, little uh, card tray. Number eight, number 11, number 14, number 17. Does that tell you what you need to know? Okay, spoiler alert. There are girded regal raiments. I can't imagine that's the right way to say that word. That's not a word I'm familiar with. I'm a, I'm, I'm a relatively intelligent person who knows a lot of words. I've never read that word before. Sorry. I'm fallible. Then, we have the letter N or Z, or it's a 2. I think it's a Z. I, I can't imagine I'm supposed to open this. It's got a good way to it. I'm very curious about it. I feel like it's probably just cards. It's cards, I think. I think it's cards. I think it's cards. I'm not opening it. I don't want to get spoiled. Ugh. Loser. Oh. Boom. More cards. Uh, and more little secrets. We've got secret mystery envelope. Oh, we have a tiny Oathsworn registration character sheet. Adorable. It's very cute. Um, we also have mystery envelopes Y and V. So many mysteries. So little time. And we have six decks of cards. These say Huntress. This one says Ranger. Um, I'm guessing these are like kind of all the character uh, specific cards. Um, this is a card separator uh, at the back of this one. Um, we've got some city cards. We have, uh, I believe, also some uh, some more character specific cards. This is for the exile. And this is for the blade. Ooh, cool. Oh, I've ruined everything. <laughs> All right, we're getting getting down to it in this box. We've got more cards. This game has a lot of cards, is the main thing that I've discovered. Another card separator. There are also unique items, 1 through 20. Uh, or a card separator, maybe four unique items, 1 through 20. We've got an injury deck. We've got unique items. We've got an injury deck. We've got scary, scary monster decks, I believe. Scary, scary stuff, people. I'm getting frightened. Uh, let me know. Comments down below. Do you want to see Oathsworn gameplay? What do you think? Can you handle it even? I don't know. You're just little guys. But if you want it, I'll do it. Okay, we've got some dice. These are uh, the dice for the monster health. Um, these like really nice uh, red dice with these kind of this kind of swirly texture. And then we have uh, it looks like some uh, cardinal direction dice with all the different cardinal directions on them. Yeah, you know how the cardinal directions go. You know what those are. Um, as well as a D12, a couple D12s, um, four D12s as well. Yeah, yeah, D12s. And then these, these are... Uh, these are what the people like. People like custom dice for fighting baddies uh, in the colors white, black, yellow, and red. Uh, these all like do different kind of amounts of damage. They're more or less likely to do extra damage or hit or whatever. Uh, you, if I remember correctly, you can roll any amount of dice up to 10 or something. You can roll like a bunch of dice, but if you ever have two blanks, your whole attack misses. So you can try to go for a ton of extra damage, but you might just flub the whole thing, which is a very, uh, you don't usually see stuff that's so push your luck in these uh, these tactical fighting games. Let's add some just kind of explosive bombastic fun 
into an otherwise very tactical game, as far as I as far as I know. Okie doke. Oh, we've also um, I think this was like a free uh, extra thing. Um, are just four d6s. I think these are four uh, character health trackers. Uh, these are these are very heavy metal dice. Um, instead of the one, there is the little oath sworn uh, symbol, the little sword with the O. And these are these are nice, heavy, chunky d6s. Uh, I don't I don't think you're ever going to be rolling these. I think you just kind of set them at the at your current health and tick on down and everything. But uh, I mean, they roll like dice. They roll just like dice do. A very, very, very nice. Yes, yes, yes. That's a song. I actually, believe it or not, I just made that song up. <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah, like, I'm, I'm not even kidding. That is not, I didn't come in with that prepared or anything. Um, that was off the top of my head. So that's really why you're watching my unboxing and not someone else's, because I, that's, that's, like, that, that's pretty clever. That's a pretty clever song. Uh, <laughs> we've got uh, a token holder for um, different tokens for your uh, for your eggs and for your feet and your th that one. Gotta hold your components. Gotta hold your eggs and feet. Um, we also have some uh, character bags. Um, okay, this was definitely one of the things that you could upgrade you you were able to uh, upgrade to like nice cloth bags these are little plasticky uh holder bags for I, i'm guessing like the cards and the any dice or anything for the various player characters um definitely feels like cloth would be an upgrade like instantly that would be nicer uh like these aren't you know bad quality or anything but this like a little plastic uh, bag versus a, a nice cloth bag. Eh, that's that's gonna add some prestige to your to your game experience. But you know, this game experience without that was already mighty pricey. So I can handle compromising here and there. Okay, there is there is at the at the bottom. There's like this whole insert that like is just kind of to hold these things, which is interesting. Like, it, other than that, it's just sort of there. And there's not there's not any secrets underneath the insert. I did order the standees um, for the uh, beasties. And so I don't know if they're in the box with the little beasties, but if they're not, then they're missing. Um, so I'll let you know. We've got one last uh, thing of cards in here. Um, wrought iron breastplate. Spoilers. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, yeah, some some items. Uh, lots of items. Monster stuff. Monster stuff. That's what you got in there. That's what you got in there. And that really is like... It, it doesn't mean anything, you know? When you don't know the context. Uh, it's, it's just some cards. And then last but not least in this base box, boom, uh, we have, okay. So, uh, I believe we have the player boards over here. And then on this side, I think there are the, the monster boards. Which side is the face on? Okay. That's the face. So, I assume going this way, it's fine. Yes, wow, look at that. Very smart. So these are all all of the uh, different monsters, but it's just the backs, so no spoilers, unless you consider the number a spoiler. So we've got the Ursus Warbear uh, and, and his cool stuff. Uh, he can equip all armor, all one-handed and two-handed axes, maces, pole arms, and flails. I'm not going to read these for everyone, but uh, it's Animus. It's not Amber. There's always some name, though. But Animus are the little orange uh, crystal gem things. He's got a special ability because he's an apex predator. Then there is... So Ursus Warbear 
I'm just going to tell you the actual names. Ursus Warbear, Avi Harbinger. Uh, we've got the Huntress. We have the Witch. She looks very surprised in her character art. Um, we have the Warden, the Penitent. Only the Penitent Man may pass. The Ranger. Uh, so the Tree Lady is the Ranger. The Cur. So the Rogue is called the Cur. The Blade. The Priest. Uh, that was the guy who I thought looked like Ronan the Accuser. Um, Exile is the one who I thought looked like a barbarian. And then the Grove Maiden is the tree lady who doesn't have any weapons. Um, okay. Good. I mean, good to know all their different names. Dang. I'm so pumped to play this. Oh, I'm, I really am. Uh, yeah, I really am. I'm so looking forward to it. I want to play with it so bad. So that's the base box. Uh, let's open up the uh, mystery chest number one, because that one does include the thing that I already know about. It includes the rap. Um, so uh, let's, let's open that up so we can see the rat mother, the, the brood mother, something like that. Whoa, 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 it's a box of boxes. It's a box of boxes. But this box is not a box of boxes. It's a box of rats. It's a box of rats. Tony Stark built this in a cave with a box of rats. That's a, you get it. Get that out of there. Okay, here we go. Here come some rats. Do not open this box unless you want to see a rat. Wow, that is a very large miniature. <laughs> That's a very large miniature. Hands for scale. <laughs> wow. 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 Okay, I, 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 you know, I did know that it was gonna be large, but, uh, <laughs> I mean, that's really big. That's a really big mini. That's a really big mini. Boy, do I just wanna open up every other box. Wow, that's a really large, I mean, that's just like a toy. That's just a toy. Holy crap. Um, a very significant uh, mold line. Like, just like, just clearly a fully different piece uh, is, is like the tail. Like the tail totally just looks like a different piece. Um, that's like... You can kind of, I don't know if that's how rats look usually, but I don't know. It feels like very clearly uh, two separate pieces like sort of glued together. Um, head as well. You can kind of see uh, that line there. I don't know if it's nice and focused up on that, but I mean like a very, very high quality sculpt. Um, she, she's only got one eye. Uh, she's got a lot of rats on her back. This is the kind of thing that's like, it's very exciting to think about painting, but also the sheer surface area is going to make that process so long. Whew. Yeah. It's, it's a really, really beautiful miniature. It looks fantastic. Does this one come off the base? I don't think it does. Not unless I break it. Um, wow. It's also, it's definitely, I mean, because it's huge. It's got a lot of weight to it. Wow. That is, that's, I think that's probably just the biggest miniature I own now. I mean, unless we're counting, I do have the, uh, uh, Sanctum Sanctorum, um, 177A Bleecker Street for Marvel Crisis Protocol. That is larger. But that's also like a terrain piece. You know, it's not like a character. That is so, <laughs> so big. Oh my God. Where am I going to put all this stuff? Uh, that's the problem with board games. Video games take up very little space, especially if you get the digital versions of them. Board games require you to have 
space. They really do. And as you'll know from either my most recent or one of my recent videos, I just got rid of 30 games, kind of with the knowledge that this game and others were on their way. I, you know, you got to make some shelf space, but boy, oh boy, getting rid of 30 games didn't free up the space that I thought it would really didn't do as much as I expected. So I tr like of these Kallaxes, I have one full cube free. I have like one and a half free cubes right now. And this game is like, that's it. That's, that's the space. Sorry to the other Kickstarter games on their way. Gonna have to figure something out. <laughs> okay, so uh, it seems as though I have one <laughs> of the standees, um, standee number eleven, and none of the other ones. So uh, you can click on the the little description of this video to see uh, if there are any updates to that. Um, a lot of people have been getting their base game and then the miniatures in two separate boxes. I got all those in the same box, but maybe the standees are coming in like a separate envelope or something at some point. Um, or I just need to contact support and uh, get them to uh, give me the standees. Um, Cause I did check and I did, yeah, I did pay for them. Um, and I don't, <laughs> I don't know why I just have number 11, but Hey, and like I have all the miniatures for all of them. So if it's easier for them to just give me $15 back, that's also fine. I don't really care. Uh, but I definitely don't have them <laughs> except for one of them, um, the 11th of the lot. So if this all interests you, uh, if you are intrigued to see me take on uh, the, the brood mother here, Tell me, let me know in the comments. Like, uh, that's the only way I'm gonna know. And, um, you know, it's a lot easier to only play uh, video games and then put them up, like board game related video games. It's all still board game related, D&D, &D, whatever. Um, so yeah, if you wanna see me play this, please let me know. Uh, I would love to do it on camera. I will also be very happy to do it on my own. I don't mind. I have fun either way. Um, so thank you so much for watching this. If you did choose to watch this particular unboxing video, as opposed to any of the other options that are out there on the internet, thank you so much. Uh, if you were hoping to see all of the other miniatures open, sorry, Charles, that's not how I roll. I'm not spoiling nothing for me. So you, that, that's probably why you didn't watch this one, honestly, is because I didn't, I didn't do that. But hey, Thanks for being here, if you're here. Uh, and if you're not here, then you can't hear me say this, but, uh, you know. Ooh, gotcha. Uh, so, <laughs> thanks for watching. Give it a like. It's nice. It helps. And stay tuned. Subscribe. There's going to be a review coming soon of another thing. So look forward to that. And yes, uh, either a review or a gameplay every other Wednesday. This is just a little extra something something for you because you mean a lot to me. You know, you mean a lot to me. I do appreciate uh, the views and the likes and the comments and the subscriptions. I, I really do. Um, so take care. Have a good one. And board and savior away. <laughs>